Shabbat Shalom. Hello. Once I was at a funeral for a young woman. She was around my age. Uh, she died very unexpectedly. And I was standing with her mother graveside. And somebody came up, and this is someone who, who I knew with 100% certainty, had the absolute best of intentions. I knew this person. They were a very good person. And they said to her, your daughter was such an amazing person. She did so many good things for so many people. It's kind of like little pieces of her live on in all of them. And her mother said, but I want her here with me now. I want her here with me now. Her pain was palpable. Of all the things that people say at funerals, there are a lot of, um, shall we say, less helpful ones. Uh, they're in a better place. Uh, my favorite, God needed an angel. <laughs> and these are things that people say because they themselves are not comfortable with pain or loss or grief. I'm not saying if these things are true or not. It's just that maybe a funeral is not the place to say them. But I got to say, I really thought that what this person said to this mother was one of the best things I've heard because it speaks to the true eternity of the individual, that we leave a little bit of ourselves behind when we touch the lives of others. And in that way, we're never any of us truly gone. And also... In that moment, that mother who buried a child, not something that any of us ever expect to experience, a pain that is unfathomable to the extent that there is no word for it for a parent whose child dies. In that moment, that mother was not comforted by the thought that her daughter's spirit lived on even if her body did not. In that moment, she was sitting in a place of such pain, such deep pain, there was no idea or, or concept or comfort about the eternity of a human being that could lessen that pain. Maybe in a different moment it could have, but, but not in that one. And just a week ago, another Jewish family in Israel had to do the unimaginable. The D family, a British family who made Aliyah to Efrat. They were driving to enjoy Pesach holiday in Tiberias. When terrorist gunmen shot Kalashnikov rifles, causing the car to crash, and then opened fire on the vehicle at close range, 22 rounds in all, murdering two of the five D children, Rena, 15, and Maya, 20. Their mother, Lucy, was brought to the hospital at Hadassah, and she later died as well, leaving behind a husband, Rabbi Leo D., now a widower, and a father of five now three living. And three children, motherless, motherless in this world, and bereft of two sisters as well. At her mother's funeral, daughter Karen said, yesterday beside the grave of Maya and Rena, I closed my eyes and I prayed you'd wake up so we wouldn't need to go through this pain twice. My heart, she said, is already so full of pain. I am paralyzed by all the pain who will accompany me to the chuppah, she said. I cannot return to routine. I cannot accept that it is over. I do not know how to end this eulogy because no matter how I end it, I will never succeed in fitting in everything. Karen's eulogy spoke with a very raw and powerful truth that words cannot balm over every pain. because words cannot capture totality, the totality of a life like that of one's mother or other close people to us. When we try to balm over pain, try to comfort it away, try to look at the bright side, play the well at least game, invent some meaning, it feels almost disrespectful. It's like saying that that pain is capable of being balmed over, soothed away, like that pain could possibly be so small. Karen had no words to end the eulogy for her mother. She said so, no matter how I end it, I will never succeed in fitting in everything. Like God and other big ideas, 
grief or pain, or the loss of a loved one, words can only do so much to capture it. It must simply be lived, or in the case of pain, endured. And I think there's a danger to alighting over the pain of loss, especially like that one suffered by the D family, which is just the latest in a series of attacks in Israel. Shootings, car rammings, rockets from the north, so that's a, a relatively new redux. Literally later that day, after that attack, on that family, a car ramming on a Tel Aviv beach promenade left one dead and seven injured. We can't gloss over this pain. We can't pretend like it doesn't hurt because it does. And that pain should outrage us. The blood of our fellow Jews cries out for justice, as the blood of all innocents should outrage us all. And if we try to, to skip over it, to, to skip over the pain, because it's just too painful for us to experience secondhand, then how are we ever motivated to seek justice? How do we find the fire to burn within, the fire that powers us to find solutions, real, lasting solutions to the problems that cause us such pain? We don't need platitudes and bright sides and meanings that have been invented. We need answers and justice and solutions. And yet, or perhaps, and also, there is power in making meaning from the pain of loss, of finding some kind of positive among the darkness which can mire us so. Rabbi Leo D. explained how he and his family made the extraordinary choice, which is extraordinary, especially for their community of very orthodox Jews, to donate his wife Lucy's organs. Rabbi D. explained that organ donation is, is not just acceptable under Jewish law, it's commanded, it, it's a mitzvah. Now, some feel that as Jews, we can't because of the prohibition against desecrating a body, the requirement to bury within 24 hours, and all of this is true, but more than all of those mitzvot is the most elevated, the highest mitzvah of all, of pikuach nefesh, to save a life. To save a person's life, one may contravene nearly every Jewish law short of murder, idolatry. And so Lucy D's liver went to a 25-year-old man. Her lungs went to a 58-year-old woman. Her corneas were saved for later use. One kidney went to a man in his late 30s, another to one in his late 50s. And this extraordinary woman's heart that loved five children into being, that loved a rabbi from Hertfordshire, England, entirely, went to a 51-year-old woman. Five lives and all saved. The director of cardiothoracic surgery at the hospital, Dr. Dana Vrut, said, the act of this noble family is a point of light in the darkness, and they saved many lives. So perhaps we need both the burning fire of the pain of loss, and the light of the life the ones we lose leave behind. It's the light that shows us the way in the dark. In an extremely moving and emotional eulogies that he delivered for his wife and daughters, Rabbi D spoke of the burning pain of loss. Our family of seven, he said, his voice breaking, alas, is a family of four but he also spoke of light. This is the first time in 30 years he said that Pesach, Easter, and Ramadan coincide. He spoke of how each is about making the world a better place, focusing on redemption and empathy. He said, we have the extraordinary ability to choose to do good. And if we do, he said, then we can make the world a better place. Rabbi D is not running from the pain of his loss. His surviving children are not. Those are holes in their lives that can never be filled, nor should they. And to say something trite, like, well, if it hadn't happened, five people wouldn't have had life-saving organ transplants, would be missing the point entirely. The tragic deaths of Lucy and Maya and Rina can be given meaning, the light drawn out of it to sit alongside the darkness and maybe lighten it a little too. 
They have meaning because we give them meaning, and that is a powerful tool. As Rabbi D said in his wife's eulogy, we are the force for good, fighting the forces of evil, and we will always prevail. May the memories of Lucy, Maya, Rena D, and all the victims of terror, and all of our loved ones, be for a blessing, be for strength, be for fire and for light to warm and energize us all. Because God knows we need it. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Rabbi, for Yishkoch, on a beautiful and very important words. And now let's